The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. This is part of a um, program with a lot of the local libraries in SUNY Albany called Art and Climate Intersections. It's the humanities and sciences. There's various programs all over the place at the public libraries in SUNY. So this is just one of, one of them. Today we have local filmmaker Greg Hickok. And he's going to talk about a film about climate change up in the Adirondacks. And then he has a PowerPoint. He'll be talking about that. And um, he'll explain all that. So Greg, thanks for coming. So here's Greg Hickok. Hi, everybody. Does anybody hear me? Um, thanks for coming. Um, I know this is a very important uh, lecture. We're talking about climate change in the Adirondacks specifically. So that affects a lot of people around here in our region. I don't know if you've ever been to the Adirondacks, but it's such a beautiful place. And if you have a camp or you ever had a camp there, or if you're home, it's beautiful. And we have to do everything to protect it. Um, so ever since our origins, humans have lived with nature without disrupting the ecological balance of the environment in which they live until now. According to many scientists and politicians, climate change is a modern day problem that has the potential to change our environment with dire consequences. According to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, the Earth's temperature has increased by 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit for the last 100 years, and will predictably climb another 2 to 11.5 degrees Fahrenheit over the next 100 years, depending on the extent of human activity on the Earth. Now, these human activities that impact the environment include the releasing of dangerous amounts of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, mainly through the burning of fossil fuels, say like your car or, or your house, something that, that needs uh, fossil fuels to make it go. Although necessary to maintain our standard of living in the Western world and for the developing world to catch up to us, burning fossil fuels to generate energy causes unpredictable changes in weather from flooding, droughts, or intense rain to more frequent and severe heat waves. Globally, people predict that the world's future is grim. It seems that only national and international corporations and governments can do something to solve this problem. However, everything starts at the local level between you and me. This video that I created highlights what the Adirondack region of New York State is doing to reduce their dependence on fossil fuels for a cleaner and brighter tomorrow. Mother Earth. Scientists estimate millions of living species inhabiting the Earth's surface, from beetles to lions to humans. Within the borders of New York State lie the Adirondack Mountains, a state park known by residents and tourists alike for its natural wonders and beauty. However, climate change may alter this landscape in unforeseen and unpredictable ways. Yeah, well, if you look at the emerald ash borer, which is not here, if it does get here, that will kill its host within three years, and that will drastically change the forest composition of this area. We have a lot of ash trees. Um, forest managers are already starting to to alter long-term forest management plans based on emerald ash borer being here. So that's something that's having an effect now, even though it's not here yet. We can stop greenhouse gas emissions. That will slow it down for sure, but we're not doing that yet. Um, you know, eventually the CO2 will work its way out of the atmosphere. The methane will work its way out more quickly, although that's more potent than CO2. But it's uh, not going to happen overnight. There's a time lag already what we've emitted today will not have full effect in the atmosphere for what 30 or 40 more years and so even if we stop all emissions today which of course won't happen can't happen uh, there's still a time lag it's going to get worse for 30 or 40 years even if we did that 
Places are attempting to do just that, reduce their carbon emissions. Places like Saranac Lake, New York. Well, our main uh, heating system is oil-fired hot water uh, with two older boilers, uh, large water content. And approximately three years ago, they started the process to install a pellet boiler. Uh, not necessarily to take the place of the oil fired, but to help supplement. Uh, they went for it for two different reasons. First reason obviously being money, <laughs> looking to save the school district money. Uh, the second reason was also trying to be greener and try to get off of fossil fuels and get onto more renewable energy. The $350,000 pellet boiler project cost the Saranac Lake School District $50,000, the New York State Energy and Research Development Authority putting in the rest. Vernon James said the pellet boiler was well worth the price, cutting the district's fuel cost in half, from 60,000 gallons of fuel oil to 30,000 gallons per year. We're very pleased with what we've got and the savings that we've got and stuff now. Uh, and we are looking at doing a capital project in the next one to three years. And yes, we're seriously considering installing uh, pellet boilers in uh, the other buildings. At least one other. People might coexist with nature if they only recognize the savings of renewable energy for the cost of climate change. The operation of causes set in action by man has brought the face of the earth to a desolation almost complete as that of the moon. Those words were written by George Perkins Marsh in 1864. In his book, Man and Nature, he foretold of a time when deforestation led to uninhabitable deserts. Um, this film is a multimedia project. The purpose of this project is designed to raise awareness, propose solutions, and educate audiences on climate change, sustainability, and conservation issues facing our world. The Adirondack Mountains was chosen as a subject due to the balance it plays between nature and the people living and visiting this area. The idea behind the project was an opportunity from Full Sail University and the embassies of France to be part of the United Nations Climate Change Project. Liking it to a title bout, Mother Nature versus Man, the Adirondacks presented itself as a natural subject for the United Nations Project on Conservation Issues. The Adirondacks is a regional economic driver for New York State, playing a huge role in recreation and tourism. However, due to its popularity, the Adirondacks also is a delicate ecosystem that environmental groups want to protect. Having lived and worked in the Southern Adirondacks, for most of my life, I learned that this region has natural open spaces that compete with Adirondack towns and villages' economic development needs. Subsequent research and analysis pointed to the fact that many of the towns and villages are also implementing strategies to go off of fossil fuels and onto greener, renewable energy sources. Conservationist like Jerry Jenkins says the United States pledge to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 80% from 2005 levels by 2050 presents challenges to local communities. In order to achieve those kinds of levels, Jenkins says places like the Adirondacks will have to eliminate all but the most necessary uses of fossil fuels. Adirondack communities are doing just that, reducing their fossil fuels. If other communities, families, and individuals 
around the world switch to renewable energy, it is the hope that this will reduce the threats due to climate change. The Adirondacks Prepared for Climate Change, or this film that I have just shown, first outlines the potential issues that face the region from a conservationist point of view. Jerry Jenkins, who I'm going to be noting because he's one of the big guys in conservation in Adirondacks, suggests that with a warming atmosphere, northern landscapes like the Adirondacks will lose their ice and snow, and with it, plant and animal life in which they depend. Jenkins says boreal animals like the marten and loon and boreal plants like the bog aster and purple saxifrage will decline or vanish completely. Some conservationist agencies also point out that the environmental impacts of climate change on invasive species is also important to note. For example, the hemlock woolly adilgid, an invasive insect species that destroys eastern hemlock trees, are moving north as temperatures change, threatening the forest composition of the Adirondacks. Not only plant and animal life are threatened by climate change, human beings living within the Adirondack Park also are threatened if climate change pushes many tourists out of this area. Employment within the Adirondack Park, of course, is dependent on tourism and recreation. Jenkins says, with the extremes of climate change, snowmobiling and skiing are limited, and snowshoeing and winter climbing almost non-existent. As a state-protected nature preserve, one would think there would be not a natural or man-made threat to the Adirondack Park. However, biologists predict that a threat is not only present, but imminent of harming this delicate ecosystem due to climate change. The Adirondack Mountains are contained within the Adirondack Park of Northern New York State. This park is comprised of six million acres of forested land, which includes about approximately two and a half million acres of constitutionally protected forest preserve. Ezra Schwartzberg is an entomologist who studies the effects of insect behavior in pollinating flowers. From his lab at Adirondack Research LLC, an environmental consulting firm he founded in Lake Placid, New York, Schwartzberg concentrates on invasive insect species biology in climate change research. He claims climate change will drastically impact the forest composition of the Adirondacks due to invasive species like the emerald ash borer, the mountain pine beetle, or any other invasive species that impact the Adirondacks. The emerald ash borer will kill its ash trees within three years of infestation, which is not too long at all. And we can do studies to pinpoint small changes and large changes we see can happen from climate change, but it is hard to predict exactly what will happen, Schwartzberg said. What we can do, however, is look at the little parts of the system that can be affected by climate change. According to Schwartzberg, research is ongoing into the science of climate change, how it affects forests, and when the tipping point of no return will happen. Conservation biologist Larry Master, formerly of the Nature Conservancy, reaffirmed Schwartzberg analysis on invasive species. He said generally there will be an increased amount of invasive species in the Adirondacks as the climate warms. Master predicted the changes due to climate change would be increasing pathogens like the woolly adilgid that will be moving northwards as the climate changes. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service even, the hemlock woolly adilgid, an insect pest that destroys these eastern hemlock trees, are moving closer north as temperatures rise. Invasive species like these adilgids remain stymied from moving to colder climates, but this may change if climate change does occur and the atmosphere does warm up. 
According to Larry Master, a lot of things are already moving north that weren't here historically before. We don't know what the changes in forest composition will be because we cannot predict those changes very well. But there will certainly be changes, he says. Master said he is ever the optimist, reassuring that the planet will stop greenhouse gas emissions before the tipping point is reached. For example, rising sea levels, flooding coastlines. However, he said from his own experience of a 500 year historic rainfall event that caused rivers to overflow and change course, climate change will likely have an increasingly negative impact on the environment. Predictably, we may experience increased heavy rains by moisture being held in the atmosphere, and we will even get more intense storms. Master said, you can't pin it on any other reason stronger than climate change. Master also said a lot is happening at the local level to reduce the dangerous impacts of climate change, but more still needs to be done both nationally, regionally, and locally. Everyone needs to do his or her own part in this. There are global warming skeptics, of course, as well as believers of climate change. For skeptics, uncertainty exists that human activity is the culprit in the rise of temperature over the last 150 years. Many say global warming is a natural process. According to a report by Fred Pierce in New Scientist magazine, up to 40% of climate change since 1990 are due to solar activities of the sun and another due to the frequency of volcanic eruptions covering including the planet. However, some people are not hedging their bets, especially people that live up in the Adirondacks. William Stanton has lived in his home in Indian Lake, New York for the past 37 years. Up until six years ago, their only source of heat was fuel oil. Then, Stanton and his family discovered that their own backyard could supply all their heating and cooling needs. He explained that the cost of oil at $4.29 per gallon, he would save money in the long run by installing a geothermal unit from his backyard to the inside of his house using 1,500 feet of piping. So he actually dug up his whole backyard in order to install this geothermal unit. It's actually a 750 foot trench that goes from one end of his yard to the other about three or four feet down. Stanton said geothermal heats the house in the winter and cools it in the summer. All he has to do is have a thermostat that can be switched from heat to cool, setting the temperature he wants it at all year round. Stanton said it is hopeful idea to get off of burning fossil fuels, which played a part in his uh, construction of his geothermal unit in his house. Uh, Buddy also said that he installed the geothermal unit for only one reason, and that reason is money. According to Stanton, it's nice to save the fuel oil and not burn the fuel oil, but to tell you the truth, what the family was after was hopefully in the wrong long run to start saving money. Stanton paid $25,000 to build the geothermal unit, but he said he received $5,000 in tax rebates in return. The Stantons are also checking into the possibility of solar cells to get the tax credit. Another Indian Lake resident is looking into the cost savings of renewable energy on a town-wide basis using a photovoltaic system. Town Councilman Jack Valentine said the values of renewable energy are very great, but cautioned that the town of Indian Lake must always think of cost. He said that when you are a small rural community you have to point out dollars and cents savings. That is the bottom line. Valentine is no stranger to energy, 
having worked for an energy supplier before being elected to the Indian Lake Town Council. Valentine said that when he looked at the programs the state is offering to encourage photovoltaic development, Valentine picked up on it. He said he wanted to electrify the entire town with solar. But National Grid stepped in and said anything over 75 kilowatts, the town must install a piece of equipment for reliability. And you know what the cost of that would be? $200,000. And he said once you look at that $200,000 piece of equipment, the economics went right out the window. So the town had to start looking at downsizing from that 75 kilowatt limit, meeting the needs of the town. And the only thing that they could actually energize with solar are they looking at the uh, water pumping station and filtering system, which is a start. If you look at it from an economic perspective, Valentine said the economic benefits are quite substantial. This saves the town from $202,000 to $270,000 within 30 years. Now, most of our energy today is coming from the burning of natural gas. So we are reducing our carbon footprint, definitely reducing that much natural gas being consumed. And Valentine said, over 30 years, that is quite substantial. Other Adirondack facilities and schools are picking up on the bandwagon of renewable energy to beat climate change while spurring economic growth in rural communities in the Adirondacks. Schools like the one in Saranac Lake, New York, have supplemented their oil burners with pellet boilers to reduce costs while getting off of fossil fuels. In part, this growth in renewables received incentives from New York State government under Governor Andrew Cuomo. According to a state news release, the governor's office launched a $27 million initiative entitled Renewable Heat New York in August that provides incentives for businesses to install wood pellet boilers. According to the governor's release, the initiative is the most comprehensive in the nation, and it will support the continued evolution of vibrant wood heating sector in rural areas of the state. So not only are we getting off of fossil fuels, but we're also supporting small businesses that support the green renewable energy sources and stuff in, in the Catarata communities. Adirondack right communities, schools, and households have realized the importance of limiting the reliance on fossil fuels which contribute to climate change. Research taken from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation has presented local solutions to a global problem. Local communities, including those in the Adirondacks, may take the adopt the Climate Smart Communities Pledge without any cost at all for them. Taking that pledge allows each municipality to be placed on a list serve that will transmit information about funding grants and low educational opportunities related to improving their infrastructure. From installing photovoltaic energy like the town of Indian Lake is trying to do, and uh, to building pellet boilers to supplement oil and gas boilers just like the Saranac Lake School District has, did. did. So to sum up, what's to say about climate change in the Adirondacks? I think it all takes up a uh, whole community effort. And not only the communities that want to do this, but the state incentives for tax incentives and for regional, regionally, I think it is very important for us to switch from fossil fuels into more renewable energy sources. Um, thank you very much for, for listening to me, and uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Uh, you mentioned the 75, was it $75,000 kilowatt uh, order above which some uh, Indian like would have to pay $200,000. Uh, did you come across any government regulations or policies that would uh, 
maybe make it more difficult uh, to to implement more uh, alternative energy? And uh, are people talking about that? Well. Um the only thing that he came across was the Indian Lakes uh, idea that uh, National Grid, um, they might have contracts with National Grid saying that you can't have like 75 kilowatt hours, uh, 75 kilowatt of renewable energy without putting some sort of a system in place. But as far as like regulations goes, I never, never encountered anything that would, uh, that would limit it that way. Yes? I was up in Plattsburgh on Saturday, and I was giving a talk about New York State policy for renewable energy. Mm -hmm. And th this is organized from the New York State Public Service Commission and ICERTA. And they, they have a $5 billion fund that they're trying to establish from 2016 to 2025. Mm -hmm. And they have all sorts of programs that they believe will lower the CO2 by the 80 percent number that you had up there. So at the Public Service Commission in Nicerta, right now, there's cases that are being finished up. These are probably being finished up, I'd say, over the next several months. And they have different programs, but one of the programs is to assist rural air areas with alternative energy, kind of like the thing that you showed at Saranac Lake. So there are a lot of regulations going on right now that, that the state's trying to put in place to help us. Great, I wasn't really aware of that. Um, so the state is helping the, the local communities through uh, through this uh, a fund to help. Just like that nice sort right. of uh, item that you showed, that there's, a, there's all sorts of programs to help other localities. And they're trying to reorganize it because they're separate programs now. They're trying to put it into one big clean energy fund to spend $5 billion from 2016 to 2025. And one of the, they have different programs in it, like for low-income people, for renters, for homeowners, but they have a rural program that specifically would affect something like the Adirondacks. Yeah, I, I did run across um, that um, because they have a rural communities grant for, for energy sources and stuff, saying like for, um, for like pellet boilers for schools and photovoltaics for towns and stuff like that. Right? And Serta really organizes most mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. the boots on the ground people who know how these projects work. Yeah. And I think there might even be uh, federal opportunities there, too, uh, for federal grants and stuff for towns and stuff in the state. Any other questions or? Yes. Do uh, you remember what you mentioned about, I think it was the fellow in Indian Lake, your supervisor? Did you say something about them switching to natural gas and them making a comment how that would lower their carbon footprint decades in the future? Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say again? Did you mention, did he say something to you about natural gas, that they were doing a, some sort of a switch to natural gas or not? Yeah, in Indian Lake, they're switching from uh, fossil fuels to more uh, to solar power. Okay, but so. We, I, but the cost the cost is, is so prohibitive that they can't electrify the whole town with town properties with, with uh, solar. Okay, so those cannot this a filtering station. But you didn't say, you didn't say that they were going to make a switch to natural gas. No, no. Okay, I misunderstood. Any other comments or questions? Great. Well, thank you very much for showing up. Thank you very much.